Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be creating particle animation inside of DaVinci Resolve in the Fusion page. And we're going to be downloading some free 3D models and turning them into particles, create uh, really cool animations out of it. So let's look at the preview and get started. Alright, so I hope you liked that little preview. This reminds me of a recent video of Mr. Who's the Boss, where he used 500 drones. He did the little drone show, and uh, I was like, maybe he could have used a big blank screen and free DaVinci Resolve to create this animation. But <laughs> yeah, let's let's just uh, get started with the tutorial over here. I'm gonna drag in a fusion composition. I know that was a very bad idea. Let's go to the Fusion Composition, I mean the Fusion page where we will create this animation. And uh, we need to download some 3D models. And we are going to be using Sketchfab for that. There are other websites such as free3d.com. Um, but I think Sketchfab is just uh, pretty easy to use. I mean all of these sites are very easy to use. You just have to create an account to download these models. So here's one uh, T-Rex model. Let me just give you a little quick rundown of this website. You just uh, search for the model that you want and once you find it then you have to click on this downloadable checkbox and you should see a download icon over here. That means it will be downloadable. If you see a dollar icon over there that means you have to buy it. So just download, a, download the one which has this icon. Download it and you will see this download 3D model. Go ahead and click on that and you will see the FBX file format over here. You have to click on the download button to download that. I think we can now use USDZ model as well in DaVinci Resolve 19. But let's just stick to FBX for now. Once you download the model, you have to extract it. And after you extract it, you will get these folders. And I have this blue whale model that I downloaded. And inside that folder, you will have a source and a textures folder. Inside the source folder, if you see another zip file extracted, after you extract it, you will get this FBX file. You just simply drag and drop it inside the flow. Take a look at it. And this is your whale model inside of Fusion. Don't worry about the textures. We are not going to use textures in here. So it's all fine if it's without textures. Now the next thing is uh, we want to add particles. Let's bring in a P emitter and a P render. And let's also bring in a Merge 3D. Let's also bring in a Camera 3D, which is this icon. And after the Merge 3D, we will add in a Renderer 3D so that everything we do in the particles over here it will be rendered back to the 2D space. Everything is empty right now because we haven't connected anything to the P emitter. If you look at the P emitter for now, you can see we have this uh, spherical particles in here. What we can do is we want to change the region. So right now in the P emitter, if you click on it in the inspector, you can see the region is set to sphere. That's why you see the sphere over here. But if you set this to cube, it will be cube. Uh, we have a mesh over here, so we'll set the region to mesh and we'll set the region type to surface. And now we can connect this FBX mesh to this P emitter and bam, you have this 3D object back in Fusion. So you can now connect this render 3D to the media out as well. Let's also right click and I'm going to go to options and disable check only so you can see this. And I'm going to go to P emitter over here, go to style and set the style to blob and change the size controls. I'm gonna set the size to zero and increase the size variance. All right, cool. So now in the camera 3D, we'll just uh, go there, go to the transform and push it back in the Z space so that we can see the wheel. And let's also use this option, use target. It's a pretty neat option. If I just click on that, I can now, uh, my camera will continuously focus on this object over here, on this target over here. Now, since this target is right on the um, on the veil over here, on the mesh over here, my camera will continuously, you know, focus 
on this mesh so if i just change the translation you can see that it's gonna focus continuously on this mesh over here so i'm going to change the uh, change the angle over here and try and get a nice angle to this so maybe something like that and now you can go to the very first frame you can see that we have very really less number of particles and that is because in the p emitter we have if you go to controls uh, set number is set to 10 so at the very first frame it is going to be 10 and the next frame it is going to be 20 next frame it's going to be 30 so on and so forth so we'll go to the very first frame we're going to tell fusion that hey i want this whole animation to be uh, the whole timeline to have thousand particles and to do that we have to go to the next frame where it will generate another thousand particles we will tell fusion here we want to have zero particles you have to create a keyframe there right so at the very first frame we have oops sorry i forgot to create the keyframe there so at the first frame we have thousand particles second frame we have zero new particles right so for this entire length we only have thousand particles now it disappears and the reason for that is because our lifespan is set to 100 which is 100 frames over here but our timeline is 300 frames long so we'll set this to 300 you can see your particles over here that is pretty much it that's how easy it is to bring this fps mesh into particles and you can just go ahead and animate translation over here i'm going to right click animate translate group go to last frame and i can change its rotation y and you have this really cool animation now i can add more particles in the background so add in a p emitter and a p render connect it to this most 3d and in the p emitter i'll just go to region and set this to cube because we want some depth as well so set this increase the width increase the height and increase the depth something like that and go to style set this to blob and set the size to zero and increase the size variance like that all right cool so you have this really nice animation but as you can see we have these uh particles that are being randomly generated we have to do the same thing set the lifespan to 300 let's go to the very first frame set the number to 500 this time and let's go to make sure you create a keyframe forgot to do that in the previous step so let's just set the number back to zero and you will have an animation like this right now doesn't that look like a drone show that looks absolutely stunning if you have fusion of studio version you can do a camera track 3d camera track and put this animation into a real footage real world footage that will look absolutely nice uh, but yeah that is pretty much it you can also in the p emitter you can add a p turbulence after this and this will sort of um, animate the particles as well i'm going to just delete this and the final step you can do is go to render 3d set the render type to hardware render and enable depth of field and let me just go to the camera controls and uh, i'll just uh, expand the control visibility make sure focal plane is checked now i can see this focal plane in the most 3d as well so if i uncheck focal plane you will see the focal plane is not there but if i check it now you can see it's right over here which is which is not very warm. We want this focal plane to be where the this target is or where the where the mesh is. So let's just um, change the focal plane, and now you can see that um, it is working fine. So I'll just disable high quality motion blur, enable proxy, and I can also um, set the resolution to three. If I just uh, right click in the very first frame over here, I can choose the quality to three and i can just sort of preview it a little bit faster um, but let's just set this to one for now and i have to just play around with the focal plane and the in the render 3d i can go to and play around with the, the depth of field blur so yeah that is pretty much it after the render 3d you are free to use any node that you want
to stylize it further for example i can do cc and i can change the color of these particles all at once or if i want to do that differently i can go to each of these uh, particle emitter nodes go to style and in the color controls i can change the color like so so yeah that is pretty much it thank you so much for watching i hope this video was helpful if it was do leave a like and also subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next one